Hi, welcome to this Programming for Cultural Heritage demo video. Today we're going to be looking at the Twitter API. So there's a number of kind of beginning steps. We're going to start trying to get done with this video. First is going to sign up for account, um, try to get API access. Um, so get a key and all that stuff to get working. And then we're going to try to start uh, interacting with the API using a, probably using a module, a Python module, to do things like searching for posts and um, creating posts and posting stuff to Twitter. So the first step is, you know, create an account. So this is kind of straightforward. You go through and create a empty Twitter account. Um, uh, you can use your email address or phone number and all that. Um, so the next step is let's try to get access to the API by requesting API key. And so this is fairly newish as far as requirements around APIs and, and Twitter. So if you go to dev.twitter.com, while you're signed in, you'll see that you have this kind of um, uh, homepage for developers. And if you go to apply, you have to apply for a developer key or access. Um, so I'm going to apply for a developer account and see, just go through the steps to see how that works. So um, they have various reasons, primary reasons for using Twitter's developers tools. So I'm more of a hobbyist, right? So I'm just kind of exploring the API. So I'm going to pick that one. Um, and so I need to add a, a valid phone number to um, the account to actually get it working. So it says you need to add a valid note phone number before prior to adding it. So I'm going to add that now. Okay, so I went through and I added my uh, phone number, a valid phone number, so they can actually text you a verification code. It seems like that's a requirement, right, for having an API access. So I added that phone number. I'm going to uh, fill in the rest of this form here. And next. So please describe how you plan to use Twitter data and or APIs. The more detailed response, easier is to review and response. So I'm going to say something like, I'm a uh, new user of the Twitter API and developer. And I would like developer and I would like access to gain experience using the API and associated um, tools. Okay. Uh, are you planning to analyze Twitter data? Say no. I mean, I'm not really I'm searching. We might do some minor analysis, but there's not a big kind of um, operation. Uh, we app you use tweet, retweet, like, or follow, or direct message functionality. Please describe your planned uses of these features. So my uh, my tests will likely try to compose um, new tweets to understand the API. Um, my goal is to better is to gain experience with the API to compose tweets or to create and send tweets uh, automatically. Um, do you plan to display tweets or aggregate data about Twitter? outside of Twitter? Uh, probably not. Will your product service analysis make Twitter content derived information available to a government entity? No. Um, all right, it must be 200 characters or longer. Okay. I'm a new user of Twitter API and developer and I could access, I would gain access to gain experience using Twitter API. This will be a hobby account to learn more about the API and using APIs in general. All right. All 
All right, so let's submit that and see. We have to agree to a developer's agreement. Um, and we will see how long this takes. Fingers crossed. Okay, so I didn't get um, I didn't get any uh, kind of questions. This was just a few minutes later from after setting up. And so I'm, I got a verification email and I verified my email address. And then I'm going to, I had a link now to developers portal. So let's see how far this gets us. And so um, it says we can create a project to access early V2 endpoints um, and set up early access. So let's see if, how far we get here. Create new project, call it PFCH demo. Um, Use case, um, exploring the API, project description, testing out API endpoints, app name, we call it uh, BFCH demo. All right, so of course, you know, I'll, you can see these, these API keys just to see what they look like. I'll delete this project later, so these won't be valid um, as you're watching this. But so it gave me a set of um, uh, keys, API key, API secret key, and bear token. And so this will allow me to um, do something with the API, interact with it. So I'm gonna copy these for now. and come back to them later when we figure out what we're going to do. And so what we want to do first is figure out kind of like what we want to, um, um, what API endpoints we want to be using, right? And so if we go to our um, docs, all right, so there is some documentation, right, to, to learn how to use their API endpoints. There are some modules that we might try to play around with in a little bit, um, but it seems like, uh, you know, when this video is being recorded, which is November 2020, there's some kind of new developments with the API, or at least recent developments. And so if we go in the documentation, um, we can see that there is uh, the Twitter API, right? But then there's these kind of like v2 endpoints right and so usually apis are versions so there's like a specific version that you're going to work with like you know they release version one and that is kind of set in stone and then you know in years if they want to make major changes to that they release a new version of it and then they you use the second version of it so there's you know there's been version 1.1 around for a while i think and now there's this new version two so we probably want to use version two because it's it's a newer, um, but maybe it's not many modules might not support it yet. So we're going to try to do it manually, just kind of building these URLs manually and then using requests, which we've used before to make these API calls. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how to um, do a couple of things, authenticate, right? And then what URLs or endpoints we need to hit to do certain things. So the first thing we need to do is um, figure out what we want to do. So let's just try searching for tweets, right? Let's try searching for a topic or something like that. Um, so there is um, basically two types of endpoints here, tweets and users. You can look up a tweet, recent searches, filtered stream, sampled stream, hide replies. So let's do recent searches. And so this is, um, um, an endpoint that lets you kind of search historical tweets in the system uh, and return data from it. And so they have some sample code here, um, but kind of the first things we need to know is how to authenticate and then what the URL is. And so if we look at their sample code page, it's a GitHub page with some code for recent search, and then they have a Python example. And so they have basically the URL they're building here so it's basically api.twitter.com slash two tweets slash search slash recents, and then you pass the um, query parameter that you're looking for there. And it looks like to authenticate, they basically have a, a bearer token. And so we would need a bearer token. We have these other things like the client API key, secret key, consumer key, stuff like that, but we don't have a bearer API token. 
And so to do that, we would need to generate this bearer token. Um, and so we, what you can do is, I believe they have a way to generate that in their site. So you could actually use their site. So if you go to the developers portal from there, so if you're in the docs and you go to uh, developers portal here, they have this your project dashboard. And so if we do the keys, um, you can see that you can generate a bearer token. Um, so let's click on regenerate it. If you regenerate your bearer token, you need to update your code for your app to work. Okay, yes, that's fine. Regenerate. All right, so now we have this bearer token that's kind of our way to authenticate with these API endpoints. So I'm going to copy that for later. I'm going to paste it in my um, this is a text document for later. All right, so now we know we have a bearer token, so we can use that. And now we just need to know how to construct this URL that we're going to request from the API. And so if we go through the documentation some more, um, uh, we just want to kind of figure out these API reference, right? So it's two tweets, search recent. Here's the endpoint that we use, authentication. Rate limit, this is important, right? So you can do 450 per 15 minute windows um, and then 180 requests per 15 minute windows if you do user authentication. I'm not actually sure which one the bearer authentication provides us, but you know, 150 or 450 requests, or I think we're app, app, app authorized, so that should be fine. So 450 requests per 15 minute window, um, you can make 450 URL requests within 15 minutes. So then it tells you what parameters you can pass. Um, so you can pass information about uh, what the uh, end time for the tweet should be. So by default, the request will turn tweets from as recent as 30 seconds ago. So if you want something, say, I want, I'm looking for tweets from two weeks ago or from however long ago. We'd have to see how, how far back this goes. Um, all right, so from the last seven days that match your search query. So we could, um, you know, say from last, you know, from a week ago today or from three days ago today. Um, expansions, comma separated list of expansions. Expansions enable requests to include IDs and full objects. So basically reference and more metadata about each tweet, right? Max results, defaults 10, max can be 100. Uh, meta field, so if you want to, media fields, excuse me, if you want to return some media, information about the tweets, like if there's videos or images associated with the tweet. Next token. Um, so if, if you're doing pagination, uh, place fields. Um, so these are, they must be kind of, if you're trying to search for tweets from a specific geographic location that have been tagged in those locations. Um, things about polls, if you're doing searching for polls, and this is a big one, query. So you can qu construct a query string that you're going to submit to this recent search. Uh, and then, you know, return tweets with a greater ID than a certain thing. That's if you're looking for a certain time, start time, uh, additional fields returned. Um, so if you want to add additional fields, user fields for each one. And then they kind of give you a curl. So like a curl is a command line interface or command line program that you could just run from your terminal to, to make these requests. And so here's the query. And then they, they only have the query parameter, and then they have these others, um, these other things. So we need, we have kind of all the information we need to kind of start building this. Um, let's just do a, um, a search for something. So we're going to uh, make a new Python file here. And so we're going to. Um, let me save it in my downloads directory. Call it uh, Twitter eSearch. PY. All right, so we know that we're going to need a few things to get started. So the first thing is we're, we're going to use requests like we usually do. So import requests. We're probably going to use JSON at some point, so we're going to import JSON. And then we have that bearer token. So I'm just going to hard code that bearer token. So I have it saved here. So I'm just going to say uh, 
b token equals this. So now I have that bear token in a variable. All right, so we know that we can make a, a request. Um, so we need a base URL, so let's define the URL. And we know from the documentation from, that we just were looking at that the API endpoint is this. So that would be our base URL to, to use for this. And then um, we know we can build a bunch of um, parameters that we can also pass to it. So we'll call that payload and that will just be a, a dictionary of things. The minimum thing we know is that we need to have the, um, the query parameter. It has to be something. Let's just, let's look for all the Matt Millers. Matt Miller, any mentions of Matt Miller? Oh, it's just, that's probably too specific. Although, I don't know. We'll see. Any, any mentions of Matthew? This is a test query. All right. So then we need to um, do worry about our authentication stuff. And so um, I know how to do this from looking from the, um, <clears throat> the example code they gave us in the, in the links that they have sent. And so they have um, this Python example code. And so that's not Python, Python example code. And so they have some examples of um, doing the header. So this bear authorization is basically sent in the header. And so we just need to kind of mimic that uh, header in, in our request. So let's copy. Uh, so we'll say headers, and then we need the spare authentication information. And they're using this format thing to kind of plop in the, um, the token, but we can do it a little differently. So we're going to have our headers author authorization, and then the bearer, and then the token goes here. This is a dictionary. So we can actually turn this to an F string, right? And so we can slot in our bearer token here. And we'll just put our bearer B token in there. All right, so now we have our header, we have our payload, and then we have our URL. So if we put all this together, we just need to basically um, say request um, get. And so we're going to pass the URL that we want to use, which is that we've defined it there. We need to pass it the, the parameters we want it to do. So we say params, params, perhaps like that, I believe. And that's going to be our payload that we're sending. So this is a query that we're, this thing we're searching for. And then we need to um, pass it the headers that we want to use. So this is our headers variable. So no clue, right, if this is going to work. So let's print out the results. So we'll print out the status code. And we'll print out the um, uh, uh, body, I believe, text, the res response from the, re the request. All right, so let's give this a shot. Let's go over to our terminal go to my downloads and I'm going to run Python 3 and I'm going to make this look better um, all right so Python 3 and then T search what is the name um invalid syntax here okay so let's go back to our code um i forgot to close this uh, closing bracket on this one all right so save that try again Um, it's maybe it's not body. It's probably um, that text. I think maybe not that body. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so it looked like it worked, right? So it returned, we got a 200 results, so there was no error. So it actually authenticated and it did some requests and I actually sent back JSON, we can see here. And this is the text, the JSON amount. And so uh, we were looking for the word Matthew. So I'm assuming somewhere in here, there'd be, oh, so this text, so they were adding somebody, right, with the word Matthew in it. Um, here's, here's another Matthew in our text, uh, Matthew there. All right, so we actually worked, right? So we got some um, results back. And then they also provided this next token. Um, so this would be, this next token is basically a way to get the next set of results, right? Um, and so if you wanted to get the next 10 count, 10 results, you, you'd use that next token in your next request and not the same request again. Um, because you, you're kind of like at a certain point in the snapshot. And so you wouldn't want to start again because then you might get new stuff, but you're saying you start here and then keep going backwards further from there. So the first thing we'd want to do is um, a couple things, right? So we probably want to increase the um, the um, number of results we get back per page. And so uh, that is an option here under max results. So we know that that can be up to 100. So if we change that in our code. And so these are just payloads, right? So we're just going to add um, another uh, a payload or parameter um, option to our query. And so we're going to add um, 100. We'll try 100 like this, see if that works as a, as a number. So let's see if we get more results if we run that again, just you know, taking it kind of slow and doing one parameter at a time. All right, bigger, right? We got much, many more results in this. And here's some emojis in there. All right, so that worked. So what we can do next is think about what, what do we want to do next? Um, so what we kind of want to do is potentially um, try to use this next token. And so we need to kind of two pieces of information. We kind of need to know how to build this query string um, and any other kind of options we want to include. So if we go back to the documentation, we could see that there's a lot of stuff in here, right? So um, let's just, let's try to include some of these because uh, we kind of want like as much data as possible, right? If, if Twitter has all this data that we want, can possibly send to us and it doesn't send it by default, maybe we just want to make sure that in our kind of requests, we get these, these, these things. So if we want to include this expansion, which is a common separate list of expansions, enable request to expand an ID into full object and includes a response object, make sure not to include a space between commas and fields. So it's basically saying, or right, if you can ask for all these additional fields. So if we go into here and we change our code to have this new parameter, and then the result of the, or the value for this is just going to be that list of, um, values that you can possibly send. So why not include it? Let's see if it works. Um, so make sure not to include spaces between commas and fields, but we're not copying and pasted. There's a lot of spaces. So I'll go through and remove those spaces. All right, so now there's no spaces. So that's one field. I'm gonna put a comma at the end, remember. So the documentations also say you can get uh, meta fields too. So why not ask for these more meta fields too? Um, so we'll go back to our code and say meta fields. And we're, I'm just gonna copy and paste the possible meta fields um, sorry, I keep saying meta media fields from the documentation here and do the same thing where the uh, not include any spaces after the commas. Make sure to put a comma at the end. And then we can also, um, there's place fields and pull fields, et cetera. 
tweet fields, comma separate additional fields returning the tweet object by default. So you probably want to get all of this stuff too, right? So it's tweet fields. And of course, you know, you'd want to, um, you might not actually care about all this stuff, but just as a test, we're going to include it all. All right, so there's other stuff too, right? If you want to include geospatial information, you can include those parameters. But let's just see if this works, right? So this is going to be the text response. Let's try to um, print out the JSON dot um, dumps of it. Oh, sorry. So we have to parse it, right? So we have to load it. And then we're going to display it. Uh, and then we, we're going to want to indent it by two. All right, so let's try it again. Uh, in, uh, I put the indent in the wrong place. Put it in the print parameter, but it actually goes inside of the dumps parameter. All right. All right, so we can see here that there is um, some results. All right, so it says for some of these fields, it says I'm not authorized for these fields. So all of these fields responses are just for one tweet. So it looks like, you know, there's even restrictions on the field level data that you can get, but here's the very top of the response, right? So here's errors. Um, so it gave a lot of errors about this response. So it looks like there's a lot of errors with these organic metrics. Any of these metric stuff does not like me asking for them. So let's see if we can just take those out of the request. Organic. So these are all the me media fields. It's organic metrics non-public metrics, public metrics. So we probably don't want any of this non-public metrics because we don't have access to those apparently, that field. Um, metrics. Uh, probably can't get non-public metrics for this stuff either. Organic metrics doesn't seem to be like that either. All right, so I removed a couple of those things that was saying errors on those fields. So let's try to run it again and see what it says. All right, so here's errors for There's lots of uh, data responses here. So let's try to write this out to a file. It'll be a little bit easier than trying to mess around with it in the um, console. So I'm just going to write it out to a file. Um, so we're going to, instead of dump, we're going to dump it to um, test uh, you know, tweet. So instead of 
writing it to the terminal, we're going to write it to a file and look at it that way. Um, okay, so you shouldn't wrap this in a print statement. That's not right. JSON dump, open the file for write mode, and indent to. And you have to tell it what you want to dump. So you want to dump, say JSON loads this. So now we have it as data, and then we're going to dump it and then pass this file and indent it. All right, so let's try to run that. I right, know errors. So if we looked in the um, directory, we'd see this um, file that we call Twitter data. And if we look at that, all right, so here we have basically, here's the data, right? And so each one of these data is one of the tweets that we asked for, except now that there's a lot more field data that we put in there. Um, that we wanted to return as well. So let's just look at one of the first ones, right? So it has the author ID, so that's a Twitter, then it has entities like mentions. So it, it did it someone they added at somebody, right? Then it has URLs that were used used in the um, tweet, it looks like. And expanded where it goes. And it has annotations. And then it has the text of the tweet itself and then it has media keys uh, about attachments right so there was media attached to it um, public metric counts so how many times it was retweeted replies like quotes uh, possibly sensitive uh, conservation ID reference tweet so if it was referenced to another tweet and then language and then the clients right so it's quite a bit of information into there and so the only other thing we want to do is um, maybe try to do this, uh, save this data, and maybe do like a number of uh, requests, right? So the data is stored here. But then there's also this includes, which I guess has like all the media that was used in it. There was like the those references, media keys, I think, that, that is in, in, available there has any errors that came back. So there were some errors. Maybe, you know, this tweet wasn't found because maybe they're deleted or something. And then this meta. And so this uh, basically is, gives us the next token. And this next token allows us to do the next pay pagination, right? So if I wanted to do this again for the next set of results, right? So we ran it and we didn't give it a start time or anything like that. So just ran it from the last 30 seconds. And so we'd want to say, all right, so 30 seconds from there and then keep going back, right? Further and further as far as we can go. And so, you know, this is a very basic search, right? But maybe if you had a more targeted search, you, you could have a kind of an endpoint of those of those paginations, right? Um, you probably want to keep track of like, uh, you could pass stuff like don't go past a certain time and then, you know, run this often and then kind of filter out which ones are new. Uh, but let's try to do this, like, um, let's just try to scrape some data, right? Some some general data for this some very simple query and um, do it a number of times. Um, but actually, let's go look, look, let's look to the, um, look at the documentation and look at how to construct these queries. I think that would be useful too. So right now we're just kind of sending one basic text field as a our search thing. And um, we actually want it to be more um, focused. So let's look at um, how to construct uh, Twitter query uh, syntax. Oh, there's one, building search queries. So we just get in our query method, our query is just basically Um, 
one word, right? But you can give these kind of, you can use their specific um, kind of language to query stuff in their query syntax. Um, so operator. So if you search for watching now, the it would find tweets containing both watching and now. So that's the kind of default operator. If you can close in quotes, you'd be searching for the exact um, phrase. And then you can also do Boolean uh, kind of and or there. And you can search for tweets containing one word, but not the other. And then, you know, searching for uh, hashtags, um, searching for tweets from a certain t a person that's tweeting, and then add all these other filters. So search for something that contains a word and it has media associated with it. So that's kind of interesting. Lots of different things. You can even send these smiley and frowning face um, emoji type things to say uh, if the tweet should be like have positive some kind of connotation or negative connotation to it based I'm sure on some kind of machine learning trait thing they have. Um, all right, so let's um, let's do a little bit better query than we have been. So let's say, um, let's look for like a hash. Say we're doing kind of research on a certain hashtag, right? So let's go, I hate to do this, but let's go to Twitter. Look at some hashtags that are trending. Uh, this is a brand new account I just created, right? So I don't really have a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of uh, suggestions here. All right, so this is pretty boring. People are searching for Big Sur because there's like some Macintosh update or something. It's terrible. Um, Yeah, people are searching for Cold War. It's a video game. All right. So, you know, um, we could search for anything we want, right? If we include it in quotes. So let's search for cultural heritage. Let's see what people are saying about cultural heritage. Um, so there's a number of results, right? As soon as from as recent as one minute ago. So this might be a good query to do. We'll have a certain amount of data. So let's use that as our query. Um, so if we want to include it in our exact phrasing, we need to wrap it in um, quotes. So let's go to our code again and replace that uh, our current search with this exact thing. Um, and then I don't, let's say, let's give it this a frowny face. So what are people, what are some negative connotation t tweets about cultural heritage? Let's just run this again and see if it works. Um, there is an error processing request, no viable alternative at input title, invalid detail. One more problems request is invalid. All right, so our our search was not valid. So it looks like this was the, the query that it was sent. So it might not like these quotations. Um, so when you are kind of building this query, you might need to escape the 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 values that you're sending. Um, it doesn't. I thought requests might do it automatically for you, but for example, if you're sending um, if you're sending uh, certain characters over the URL, like in the URL, they need to be escaped. So you might need to need to escape the quote marks. Um, so uh, let's look up how to do that. Um, so I'm just looking on the web here. I'm just searching for escaping quotations. So we're looking for URL encoding of double quotes.
Um, so I think uh, this percentage sign 22 is the URL escape code for it. So here's a bunch of URL escape codes. So space is that. 22. All right, so I did some research and request does encode the URL um, automatically in the parameters for you, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. And then in addition to that, the on the web, it shows you on their documentation how it should be formatted. Right, so it says you should like if you're searching for these positive um, kind of um, emoted there, you you would say percentage line three a and then percentage line twenty nine to represent the colon and the parentheses. So you, you can actually check what the URL that the um, request is doing by printing out um, the request uh, dot URL. And that will actually give you the URL that it's, it's trying to send to the server. And so if you try to look, if you ran it again, um, oh, if you ran it again um, without the S, not request, request that URL, um, so here's the URL that it's sending, right? And you can see that everything is encoded just fine. So I'm not sure. It might be that the this V2 API is not support, doesn't support those operate those query parameters with the the positivity indicators. So it might be something like that. Um, so we'll just leave that off for now. Um, we have to do some more research on why it's not supported. But if we take those out, then our basic um, Pass is still the same, right? We wanted to basically try to use this next character to kind of scrape tweets about a certain um, uh, hashtag or event or something like that. And so uh, what we wanted to do is use this next token to actually make the next request. Uh, so what we could do is we need to get access to it first. So instead of printing out all this stuff, let's print out. Uh, we know that it's going to be in data uh, meta, I believe. And then there's this token called next token. So if we ran that, we should see just the token print out. And again, this is the token that you pass to the um, to the, let's look at the documentation again, that you pass to the um, endpoint to say, okay, you know, you already did a search for me and I want to keep going on that result set. So here's the next token I want you to find for me. And that's the only thing you have to send um, uh, in addition to the query parameter probably. All right, so we're going to have to do like an initial query and then let's do say, Let's scrape the last 500 tweets. So we'll run it five times. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to keep track of the next token. And then we'll say, OK, let's uh, do this initial query. Um, the data uh, is stored in this key called data. So um, let's make a, 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 um, a new list called all data. And then we'll just, um, in Python, you can add, you can kind of merge two lists together by just saying um, data equals all data plus uh, the response. So we'll take this empty list and add in the new, new um, res results for the first request. And then we have the next token here. Right, so now we have the next token. So now we did the initial request, we have the next token. Um, let's do a loop for like 
five times, right? So let's say four um, or in range uh, zero to five. So it'll do like six. So we'll say one to five. It'll do five loops in this for loop. And then for each loop, let's make a new request. Let's build a new request for everything. So the new request is going to be the same URL. Our payload is going to be different though. So we're going to overwrite our payload. So we're going to do the same query that we were doing before. Because I think that's a required field. But now we're going to have this next token, which is um, the token that we just got. That's stored in our variable next token. And so it, the payload will be a little bit different and the header is the same because they're the same bare token. And then uh, the next thing we want to do is same thing as we did the first time, which was add all that data back into the, our big empty list or a big list that's not filling up. And then make sure we have a next token pulled out for the next loop, right, to go around. And then at the very end, Set a print statement here. So we'll tell us where it's at, and then at the very end, it will um, let's write out all the data instead of the just the data. All right. So let's see if it works. All right. So if we look at our file again in our editor. Um, it's pretty large. Uh, let's see how many uh, IDs here we have. Or how many of these we have. It'll tell us how many we have. So there's 500 results. So there's 500 matches, right? So basically, we just scraped, scraped the last 500 tweets um, that had these um, specific text in it and you can come in here and try to see uh, what the date was and see how far back you went if you could find that so this was created um, today you know this is not this is not EST so it's hard to say when it's UT or universal time zone so I'm not sure when that was so you'd have to like figure that out and maybe um, adjust the start time and stuff like that if you want to go further back those start time parameters but there's a lot of parameters you can play with um, in these that you can pass to it right and a lot of different things to query on um, start time um, and you could even like keep track of a since ID so you could say like um, you know out of this query I know this was the last one so start from there and keep going back so you can do a lot of stuff. And I think the only limitation is your rate limit, right? So we'd, you'd have 450 tries to make requests until you get stopped after 15 minutes. So you could potentially harvest, you know, tens of thousands of tweets going back days, um, up to seven days using this approach. So that's one way of doing this. Um, there's other endpoints available, of course. Um, we just did the recent search uh, endpoint that is available, but there is other endpoints. So there's um, tweets, so there's a lookup, so you can return information on one tweet. There's um, some other things. There's uh, user lookups, so you can return tweets about us, uh, information about certain users and, and kind of, and you can really build that query string out to do more advanced things. So you can say, I want to see tweets from this user at this user between these two times. And you can encode that all into that into that query string. I'm using their using their kind of uh, suggested way of encoding it in these parameters using their code, their um, search operators. So that should get you started with um, just doing basic searching. Uh, and the next time we'll look at actually posting to Twitter.